Hey, are you ready for a super sweet interview with someone who knows this stuff about gold and silver and the COMEX and inflation and the Fed and the bond market and, and, and the silver short squeeze? Well, you're not going to want to miss this interview with James Anderson of SD Bullion. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. In this video, I'm talking with James Anderson, the former managing director of goldsilver.com. Yeah, that's Mike Maloney's website. And for the past three years, he's doing the content marketing for SD Bullion. This man has lived an impressive professional life with online bullion dealing, and he knows a thing or two about what's happening with silver and gold. So it is my pleasure to invite James on Yankee Stacking. Hi, James. How you doing? Good, Yankee. Thanks for having me on your channel. Well, I'm honored to have you on here. You know, the thing that drew me to SD Bullion was the value you provide to us stackers. And I love the Docs Deals page. It's like oh, yeah. the first link I go to. For sure. Every week there's something new on there. So it's it's good to have bookmarked and to come through and check it out. You know, yep. I mean, yep. especially if you're dollar cost averaging, there's a lot of people who are just putting in small orders over time. So right. it's worth a check all the time. The new affiliate program that we've launched, we wanted to go out and find channels who are like-minded, who had a subscriber bases that would be, you know, good matches for our client base. Mm. And you, you definitely fit that profile. So Thank you. for people out there who are watching, I mean, the URL is sdboyan.com forward slash Yankee. Uh, go check that out. And uh, if you place orders with our company, uh, Yankee gets a slight, a slight little slim affiliate uh, profit margin. <laughs> but that's, but you still get the great deals, right? <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, everybody's winning there, right? Oh, so it's awesome. not just the company, but Yankee yep. and, and as well the customer base, we'd hope. SDBullion.com slash Yankee. I'll put that in the description down below. All right, enough of that. Let's start with the Federal Reserve. Jerome Powell made some, I guess you could call it remarkable statements last week he basically said i don't see no stinking inflation we're not tapering our bond purchases and we're not raising rates at least on the short end of the yield curve that's it mm -hmm. no inflation no taper no rate increase for i don't right. know two years or whatever here's the deal james the stock market doesn't believe him yeah and usually i don't either but i mean come on do you actually believe the Federal Reserve this time when they say they're not reversing quantitative easing and they're not raising short-term interest rates? I don't think they can. I mean, things would break if they don't intervene at some point, and they probably will, and that'll be the cause of them intervening. It just happens over and over. It's just repetitive cycles. So they say what they have to say. They don't really care in terms of the words that come out of their mouth. They could all be lies. But uh, the, the bottom line is uh, we're in a quandary in terms of uh, the fiscal uh, situation in the United States, the mm -hmm. debt load that we have, the promises we've made that we've not saved for. I mean, I'm of the opinion that there's going to be a, a, you know, coming 10 years or more of defaults from mm -hmm. not sitting on the private side, there'll be a lot of defaults, uh, pension side that are, that are run by private companies. There'll be a lot of defaults, but then there'll also be, uh, a, a pseudo default by, by the currency devaluing sharply uh, in the coming decade or two. And that's how we'll be able to not only pay off what we've promised, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be through higher, much higher inflation, uh, runaway inflation likely. It, I, I totally agree with you, James. I mean, and I think, isn't the bond market just screaming inflation? Oh, totally. I, I would, you know, that's why yields have been rising. And I mean, I, one of the guys I follow a lot in the bond market is uh, Scott Menard. And he, mm. I mean, he's basically now today's bond king. He's what Bill Gross used to be. He, mm -hmm. he, uh, he states that, yeah, I mean, yields are going up, but ultimately they have to go back down. He thinks that that 10 year yield may go back to zero and he could possibly go negative in the next downturn. So uh, that shows you how scary it could be that you would run into a 10 year bond and mm -hmm. agree to get paid less uh, in terms of 10 years later. And that's how scary things could get in the next crisis. It is amazing. You don't read about this in old economic textbooks. It's just right. negative, <laughs> negative interest rates are not in it's old crazy. textbooks. Nope. Yeah, it, it, this is only a recent phenomenon. Had you said, Yankee, had we talked about this a decade ago, we'd have, we'd have sound like we were crazy. Yeah, we would, absolutely, yeah. no doubt. But then again, Wall Street portfolio managers they, they, I think they're crazy too. All right. <laughs> I think they're crazy because they actually 
are convinced that the Fed is going to do this. They're going to stop buying bonds. They're going to raise rates. I think that's impossible. I think if they raise rates, they collapse the house of cards. They, if they stop buying up bonds, and right now it's treasuries, but it's going to be you know munis, it's going to be corporate bonds, it's going to be every single piece of paper that nobody wants. They should realize this, James. They should realize that that other central banks like Australia, the ECB, they're upping their bond buying already. They're trying to deal with these you know bond yields right now. When are they going to wake up and fear the fact that they are going to buy more bonds? They are going to keep the rates at zero. They're probably going to start messing with the you know, long end of the yield curve. Yeah. Oh, I agree. The problem here, again, is that the plumbing of the global financial system of the debt markets, hmm. it's it's dominated by the fiat federal reserve note or the U.S. dollar. Um, you know, the euro has a, a bit of the plumbing, a, a bit of the percentage of the reserve currency. But I mean, if you look around, there's nowhere else to run. In the future, there will be. I think the SDR is coming out from the IMF. Right. I think they're going to create a new bond market with the M SDR. And so what you'll end up having is kind of a hybrid bond uh, market where it won't just be so U.S. dollar focused. It will be a mix of those majors mm -hmm. and they'll all have a chunk of these MSDR. But that's like, you know, that's probably years from now in terms of size and scale for people to run in, into. Yeah. And, you know, once you have a yield curve control, you're going to see people running into that because they'll, they'll see more growth, potential growth in, for instance, in China or in other places in the world. And they may want to have diversification of the fiat currencies that underlie the uh, bonds that they're running into. But well, that's a little further down the road. Sometimes I think our country has lost our collective minds over what inflation is and, 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 and what it does to a nation. Most of us don't even have a memory of what it was like back in the 1970s. They don't remember stagflation. They don't remember the misery index. It's like, what, 50 years ago? They don't, they don't remember that. Well, we don't even count like the, the prices of healthcare or a lot of times, you know, general real estate prices going up right. when, it, when we talk about CPI. And so, I mean, there's people who, mm. every time they go to the hospital or whatever, they get a med they have to default on that bill. They can't pay that bill. That's the situation it is in the United States now. If, uh, you know, if, say you have a kid and you don't have the money to pay for it, you just walk on the bill. Uh, that's how crazy things have gotten. So, I mean, it is what it is. The median, the median average person in the United States is not that wealthy. And if you use the average, it gets skewed because there's you know a, a large swath of people who have a lot of money, uh, but they kind of skew that data. But the median sure. person is just getting by barely. I think what we're walking into or what we're, what we're at, at right now is similar to, I'm not saying we're gonna have hyperinflation, but it's very mm -hmm. possible in mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. And it's very similar to what happened if you go back and you look at the Weimar Republic, what was happening sure. then. Before the Weimar Republic's hyperinflation really got running on a, on a straight up a wall, there was speculation in virtually everything. And then there was, I mean, I, I'm talking about crazy speculation in terms of uh, various currencies and such. I mean, people were speculating in everything and they were using leverage and doing all types of wild things like they're doing today. I mean, if you think about the myriad of different things that you can go out and speculate in and try and make, you know, quick, uh, easy buck, uh, there's just so, so many things now. It's, it's, it boggles the mind. So I think that's what we're walking into is a situation where Federal Reserve is going to keep propping up and keep trying to nominally make things look fine. As, as time goes on and the inflation starts to erode the real value of these things, you may have a stock market high that's higher five, 10 years from now. The bottom line is divided by real assets like gold or silver. It should lose tremendous purchasing power. And so that's my bet is that real things that are precious are going to eat away at the value of these propped up uh, paper assets that have been bubbling up. It, well, one last thing too I'm thinking about with, with the Fed. it I think they're delusional too, James. I, I think... What was it that Jerome Powell said, I think, uh, last week? He was calling the possibility of inflation uh, transitory. Yeah. Okay, he yeah. thinks it's, it, it, if it comes, eh, it'll be little. They can stop it, turn it on a dime. It's like they have this crystal ball at the Eccles building in D.C. I don't, I, I, I don't get it. I mean, they, inflation is already here. We're already starting to see the huge increases in prices, I mean, just go to the grocery store. Lumber prices, wood is ridiculously expensive. I think I heard just the other day that it adds approximately $24,000 to the price of a brand new home. $24,000 average. Yeah. That's inflation. So I don't know what Jerome Powell's smoking, but I think it's here. I think he doesn't know what's coming. He has no crystal ball. 
And bottom line is I don't think the Fed can stop it. That's the that's the delusion. I think they think that, oh, you know, it hasn't been around for 20 years. So when it shows up, yeah, no problem. We'll we'll pull a lever, hit a button, and it will go right back down and everything's fine. Yeah, it's going to be funny to see when they finally have to admit that they have the inflation they've been wanting the whole time, right? And it's right. like running at 5, 7, 8, 9, 10 percent. Yep. Um, what they're going to try and do. That'll be interesting to see how they try and contain it or, you know, masquerade, et, et cetera. But I mean, just right. since last year's pandemic lows, gasoline's up over 220%, lumber's mm. up 186%, crude oil, 170%, soybean oil, uh, 124%, silver over 100%, platinum near 100%, heating oil, canola, like yep. things that people eat. Like this is the problem is I think ultimately what we're going to end up having I mean, this is why they have to get fiat CBDCs running and UBI running across the world, because food's going to get exorbitantly more expensive per people's average salaries. And if, I think the threshold's like if, if food in the emerging market, this has been studied before, but once food hits about the 40% of your um, monthly income, mm-hmm, once it hits mm-hmm. about that level, that's when uh, males go out and start riding in the street, essentially, because they look at their crying baby and they think we may as well have a revolution because these guys can't manage things. And so they go out that like, cost benefit analysis of should we try and revolutionize this place or not? It's usually about there. So yep. if you want, if you want to have your, you know, if you want to have your dictatorship stay in place, you might need a UBI fiat CBDC system. And that's, I think what they're working on. This Absolutely. Decade. That is, you'll see it. You know, it's not just around the corner in a sense, James, I think it's already here. Think about the stimulus. Yeah. It's, right. it's, uh, and I, I hate to use the word stimulus because it's more like a combination of corporate welfare and universal basic income. I don't think they can pull back. This will be really interesting if this morphs into a formal UBI policy with this administration. Yeah, I would think so. Because when you look at the United States, I mean, what is it run by? 70% consumerism, right? And so Mm -hmm. the consumer has to spend money or things don't work. And it's also when you talk about like the who's the biggest employer in the United States, it's small businesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, small business revenues, they're still off 30%. So they make 70% of what they made pre-pandemic. And that's been the case for the last year and a half or last year and X month. Right. Um, it's been pretty brutal. And if you look at consumer spending, like we only get back to pre-pandemic levels when there's a massive injection of these um, stimuli. And, mm-hmm. and you can see it spike up and then go back down just below uh, the threshold because people aren't, they don't have the income they had. We are in that cycle. And I think you're exactly right. I thought, I think we do not go backwards from here. No. Um, we move forward into a new brave world. I think, dude, I got $5,400 dropped into my bank account. I mean, that here's why, wrong. here's why it's not only is it, it's uh, one half like, but then also reminds you like, Oh, then why do we pay taxes? They just print this stuff out of there. It I makes know. it so hard to digest the fact that they take as much as they do out of your paycheck and they're just simply, you know, creating this stuff with a keyboard. We've passed the point of no return. And I think if the government takes this stimulus away, I, I think we're going to get an SHTF collapse of uh, the real economy. I think if you take away the Federal Reserve's money printing, you're going to get a collapse in the markets. Yeah, and that's been the case, I think, since 2019. If people could remember back when there was the repo fiasco, it's kind of this very complex, you know, overnight lending thing that they stopped doing with the banks did at least. And I think what it signaled for those that are watching was that something probably exploded in the shadow banking uh, side of the market. Right. And that banks all of a sudden were like, I don't trust. I don't know nope. who's who's on the wrong it. end of that of that losing bet. Yep. And so the Federal Reserve, New York Fed had to come in and start, you know, uh, they, they basically had to come in every night and lend. Uh, overnight lending uh, in in billions and trillions it started adding up into. And so it's not as they're not, I've looked at the data recently, they're not even close to what they were back then. So it's slowed down a little bit, it's quieted down. But that was kind of what set this whole thing off when you go and look at, you know, the latest change in the way that the Federal Reserve has had to act. Then they did, you know, the Fed pivot happened when they had the stock market fall down and then the plunge protection team came in and started Mm -hmm. pumping it up. And so uh, the, you know, it's, it's very top down. They think that that's going to work. It's not. It never does. History already shows whenever you have top down uh, management of the economy, it fails. And we're getting our butts kicked by China right now. I, I don't know how you could look at the situation and think otherwise, because, I mean, after this pandemic, they China's back. Their GDP's, you know, back to 
that's a pretty high level. So we're still failing over here and we're, we're arguing and fighting over very small things that, while China is, yeah. is looking at the big picture. Yeah, that triggers a lot of people when I say that too. Uh, some people say, oh, it's all it's all fake. They're, they're a communist country. They're lying through their teeth. That's not the real GDP. They're building stuff nobody's living in. They're, it's all a charade. You're, you're crazy to believe their economy isn't good. Listen, they're the one making stuff, okay? Yeah. We're the debtor nation. They're the creditor nation. That used to be the complete opposite. I, I agree with you, man. I think we're getting our butts kicked big time by China, and it's going to continue. All right, so let's talk about COMEX for, for a few minutes. In recent months, more investors are taking delivery of silver, meaning fewer contracts get rolled forward. In fact, March saw almost double any recent March contracts uh, for delivery that, you know, for the last few years. At the current rate of deliveries, they only have about one year of supply left. So I watched this like a hawk. I created a video like just, just about a year ago. I was yep. tired. How, you know, it was entitled How Much Silver Is There? And it's on SD Billion YouTube channel. And you yes. can look it up. Uh, we begin by looking at the 1990s in a time when comics apparently had a huge amount of silver. If you look at the way the chart was, it was like a mountain of silver had been built up. And Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway came in and took literally the entire mountain of silver in a matter of, you know, 12 months. Um, my contention in the video, because we built a second hump larger than the 1990s hump, my contention in the video is that uh, that second hump was going to get drained this decade, and it's already begun. The drain has started with the uh, silver squeeze movement, really. In 2020, when there was this discrepancy between futures market and the London market during the pandemic uh, peak, you had a situation where, you know, Comics was sucking in a lot of silver from uh, London. There was this right. arbitrage trade that traders could bring up a thousand ounce bars over to comics and make a good mint by doing so. Mm -hmm. And they did. There was a lot of silver that ran into the whole, into the warehouses so that that mountain that I was describing got even large, even more mountainy, uh, even more <laughs> big, you know, got large. And so, and so, yeah, that was worrisome. But then Q1 2021 comes around and you have demand that's just off the off the charts in mm -hmm. terms of investment silver demand. And we've had uh, over 25 million ounces get drained out of comics uh, in the first few months here. And I know that this isn't just this isn't industrial because I know I, I, I check each warehouse. I was going to ask them, you that. Is it yeah. industrial demand that's doing that? No, it's investment no. demand. It's literally the silver squeeze sucking silver right out of that. Um, and I know this because one of the ma major bullion desks operates a warehouse there and you can see it drop by 20 million ounces in the first few months. Wow. And I know this because we do a lot of business with this company. <laughs> we have a lot of clients who suck that silver. So uh, this is firsthand. Um, you know, I can see it right there in the charts. I know what our sales are like and that's exactly what's happening. This, this company spent a lot of money uh, mm -hmm. creating uh, infrastructure so they could stamp out coins, you know, not coins, but rounds and bars. Right. And that's what they've been doing for North American retail clients who've been, the demand is just, the demand has never been this high in terms of, uh, you know, people buying it for, for long-term savings. So they can, that's exactly what's happening. They can definitely get more though, right? Uh, they can, because when you look at the amount, there's like it's 370 million supposedly total, mm -hmm. but you have to look at the eligible versus registered. Registered is the most important number. Registered is what is actually being traded and kind of up for grabs if someone really wants to force delivery. And I think it, it runs to about 100 million is in registered and about 270 million is in eligible. And eligible may come to the market when mm -hmm. spot prices of silver, say, gets to 50 or beyond. They may be like, well, maybe it's time to sell and take some fiat profits. But for the most part, that eligible pile just kind of sits there. And it doesn't even, it, it, nobody knows for sure whether or not it'll ever come to market. So that 100 million ounces sounds like a lot, but 100 million ounces of silver is not a lot of silver, especially at these demand clips. Yeah. And that's what we have here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I mean, they can get more, but what the question is at what price? I mean, that's that's the thing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be harder and harder for them to get it. Uh, the longer they suppress price. the price yep. at like 26 right now, mm -hmm. I mean, the longer they do this, the worse it gets for them in terms of supply available for immediate delivery. I mean, what you're going to keep mm -hmm. having is people buying at these thresholds. It does depress a little bit of the excitement. Don't get me wrong. I mean, people who came in and thought this was going to be flipped in a of matter course. of weeks yes. are kind of disappointed. But this is a this is a multi-year bullion war that's being waged with battles that go back and forth. Uh, we win a battle here. They win a bunch of battles there. They got the derivatives. We got the bullion. I'll take the bullion war. I think we're going to win that. But yeah. it's a long term. I game. agree. The problem is you've, you've got the hype of the right. you know, Wall Street bets that, that sure. sets the stage for people to think this is a quick flip. Right. However, at the same time, do you think that a, um, a slow motion short squeeze is still on? 
Yeah, I, I from the beginning, from the onset, uh, I was the first guy they interviewed on their YouTube channel. And I said right away, I said, it's possible if you get enough people, mm -hmm. because uh, what you end up having is a you end up having is I think the growth of people's understanding. The internet has that ability to teach people and you'll just end up having an exponential growth path. And at some point it becomes like wildfire. And so many people who haven't had exposure or understanding of this will get understanding of this and probably take advantage of it. And that's my belief is that you're just going to keep seeing growth in terms mm -hmm. of new users. And the fact that, you know, they've gone from no users on their wall street silver page to now 43 oh, it's 000, over 40, yeah 000. i know so it, silverback yeah, right ape strong yeah yeah it's, <laughs> it's definitely growing and these it these is. youngsters mostly youngsters but there's right. older folks there too but they have a lot of energy and that you cannot you know it's sometimes old grizzled stackers they you know they're rah, rah, rah. i mean these hey, guys have a lot on, of energy what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> These no, young guys have a lot I love of energy. It. And a, I love yeah. it. I, I just, I love seeing millennials and Gen Zs stack. It really sure. is. It, it's just that the expectations need to be yeah. realistic, right? This is a tough nut to crack. Okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is big. This isn't you know. You're shorting. You're shorting the whole system by <laughs> exactly. buying bullion, essentially. Right. I, mean, no I, I personally don't think bullion's going into the teens again. I don't uh, either. Ever. You know, either. we saw in the pandemic low spot could have got to twelve. And bullying was essentially in the 20s still. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and just, we, we, I mean, if you just look at the amount of currency creation since those times, it's been off the charts. And, and if you look overnight about, you know, how silver has been trading outside of the New York comics hours, it's been going up a wall uh, the last year or so. And that the reason for that is simply that the rest of the world sees what's happening in terms of the monetary aggregates. When I say monetary aggregates, mm -hmm. I'm talking about, the monetary base of the Fiat Federal Reserve note uh, in terms of like the cash and the demand deposits, how much they've exploded. They've almost doubled in the last 17 months of time. Since the New York Fed repo started, it was like 3.2 trillion. Now it's 5.2 trillion. I mean, that is insane. That's incredible. The, the US government has to uh, do a whole lot of debt this year. I think 5 trillion is the number they have to revolve. And, the, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you notice in the headlines, but foreigners aren't buying this stuff. So what's happening is I think that they're they're kind of playing, the Federal Reserve is kind of playing like five different plates in the air. The Treasury is <laughs> doing a whole bunch of weird things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think we already have a lot more than what 7.7 .7 trillion is reported on the balance sheet. I think there's more going on than, mm -hmm. than what appears. But by the end of the year, I, it's pretty, it's pretty, to me, it seems like we'll be at the 10 trillion level for the Federal uh, Balance Sheet. If you get the Federal Reserve's balance sheet to 10 trillion, I mean, gold's going to be probably at new nominal highs, probably mm -hmm. running toward 2,500. Mm -hmm. And silver, I would assume, is going to be running toward 40s uh, an ounce by that time. So that's my that's my belief is how the way the, in, the year end uh, runs is that we kind of go through this. This beginning of the year has been kind of slow, obviously, even price consolidations. But uh, once the Fed kind of blinks and shows mm -hmm. that they have to monetize virtually all debts, uh, that's, <laughs> that's, a US that's the signal. Yeah. That is yeah. the signal to the markets. And that, I think, will spike gold and silver i totally agree with yeah. that in terms of velocity a lot of people say it doesn't really matter you, you you can print all you want if it's just sitting somewhere if you know it's it's like you you, you can multiply 20 trillion dollars by zero and you still get nothing so it, <clears throat> that's true the velocity is at the lowest level it's ever been and the mm -hmm. reason why is because the currency creation has never been larger it's all kind of sucked into different bubble asset classes. Mm -hmm. So if you look at Bitcoin at 50 grand or whatever it is, that's uh, inflation. If you look at the price of stock market, you know, at 4,000 S&P or whatever it's gotten to, that's right. inflation. Look at the real estate market. We got another bubble in a lot of places. So, I mean, that's, that's another term of inflation. But in terms of currency creation and how it operates, if you give it out to the, the hoi polloi, the average folks, mm -hmm. uh, they actually spend it. Um, you know, the lower and middle class need it and they're going to spend it on Main Street. And so it will get out there. The question is, how much is it going to take finally to get over that that wall of debt that everyone's in? And, you know, a lot of this currency goes into the debt hole. So it doesn't show up in terms of uh, velocity turning over. Other I think it's going to be stunning when it happens. People won't know what hit them. When, when we have inflation at the same time, people are losing jobs. Yeah. Stagflation, okay? Something that, happened in the 70s none of the central banks have that in their calculus none of them figure factor that they don't see and the that other happening. thing the other thing they don't have in their calculus is the speed of communication like when it goes wrong and it goes really wrong it's going to get around very fast and the psychological damage that, that creates and how quickly people are going to start spending stuff you're going to be like uh i need to spend it because a month from now it's going to be buying me less and that's 
that typically is what leads into a hyperinflation. And we don't have data for that. That's a psychological phenomenon. One last thing, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Central bank digital currencies. You mentioned it, the CBDCs. Sure. You think that's coming I do. Soon? Uh, they've already, they're already building it. We had uh, Augustine, the head of... Uh, Augustine Carstens, a Mexican elite uh, central banker who is now the head of the BIS. Think about that. We have a, a Mexican central banker who's telling us how to do things. Uh, he's running around the world and he's bragging about it. He's, he's already working with the Bank of England, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Bank of Japan, the Bank, you know, Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. He's working with all the major central banks so they can all make their own fiat central bank digital currency. Here we call it often fiat fed coin, essentially. Uh, and we're, you know, if you listen to Powell, he he's like one of the slowest, one of the most conservatives, the way that he talks about it. But you can already the Fiat Yuan is kind of do, doing it. They've already got test pilots over in China. They'll probably be the first major Fiat currency to go Fiat CBDC. But Fiat Euro is coming very soon. I think it'll be faster than the Fiat Federal Reserve note. But that's coming. And that that changes things a lot in terms of the way that people receive funds, the way that people can send funds the way that people spend funds, uh, the way that the banking system kind of gets bifurcated by that. And so the U.S. The has the, the a little way bit... the government tracks and traces what you buy and spend and when you do it and how you do it. <laughs> and, the, and their ability so... <laughs> to give you to give you stipend like, yeah. hey, oh, you, you want UBI in order to get 99 percent of the population signed up on their smartphone. They'll give out the UBI checks and you, you're damn right. They're going to. I mean, if they give out free checks, Yankee, I know you're going to get the Fed coin on your on your cell phone. <laughs> you're going to turn that Fed coin into bullion. I know it's they're going, to, they're going to say you got to use it in 30 days or it's gone. Talk it's about true. getting can, velocity up. <laughs> yeah, so there's all types of tricks they can yeah. do, and yeah. and yeah, and it's it's really about control. I mean, that in the end, I'll be all. And and Carson says it. I mean, he literally says it out loud. The reason why they're doing it is because they, they have full insight. They have control over the situation, the system. It gives them all types of new tools that they've never imagined possible. And it gives them full visual of what, what's what, happening. What does, the, that do, what does that do to current crypto? I think ultimately the way that Augustine Carsons talks about crypto is yeah. that when they launch it and when the time is right, they're going to attack crypto in some weird way. Boom. And they're going to, yeah, there's going to be some type yep. of crazy attack where they, they point at crypto and say, look, you can't trust that stuff anymore. Yeah. Trust us. And, and it, it, we kind of guessed this going for years, course. but I, I never thought this was going to play out as dumb as it is. <laughs> and if you look at the way that the Bitcoin price discovery works, it's yeah. so shady and dark. Like, um, I think a lot of it has been pushed up and propped up by people who've been ramping it and pushing it up so they could sell off their coins at profits mm -hmm. and smashing it down in illiquid time so they could short it. And so it's a it's a wild west. It's like it reminds me a lot of like what the stock market was before regulation in the 1920s. They, all those old tricks they used in the 20s, uh, they use it a lot in Bitcoin today. And uh, sure. you can see it, the market is not let's just say it's not the most, uh, you know, in terms of like uh you know, free price discovery. I think a lot of it is pushed and moved around. It scares me to think that our cash is going to get destroyed and, and we won't have anything in our actual physical wallets anymore. My hunch is they'll go slowly on that. You mm -hmm. know, they'll try and kill cash as time goes on. But uh, ultimately, it'd be very foolish not to have some cash in the system because if the, if the internet fails, which it could easily do, mm -hmm. if we don't have cash, you're going to have absolute chaos. Uh, so <laughs> you literally do need to keep some cash in the system. Otherwise, Yes. You have a real problem if the system yes. fails. I, I can't agree with you more. It is a very scary proposition to yeah. think that we would get rid of it. Can you tell uh, the viewers that are watching a little bit more about what you do at SD Bullion and, and your company? So, yeah, I, I'm the content manager over there. I, I create a lot of the content. So every week I put out videos on the SD Bullion mm -hmm. YouTube channel. So uh, go over there and check out the videos. If you like it, subscribe. Um, so mainly that's what I'm doing. I'm doing content marketing and more or less just trying to get people insights. I, every week I'm looking at what's happening in the markets and I try to condense it down into a power packed, you know, 10 to 15 minute video that'll give you an idea of what's been happening and what are the major uh, conclusions of the week of what, what maybe you need to keep an eye on. So that's what I do week to week. SD Boy YouTube channel, check it out. And then for you Yankee people who watch this, uh, go to sdboyan.com forward slash Yankee and check out uh, check out what we got in, in stock. And if you purchase, Get hopefully Yankee, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all three will all three of us will win our company Yankee and you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, James. Thanks for the time you spent. Yeah, it's a pleasure, Yankee. All right, take care. What incredible knowledge that guy has, and I hope you got a lot out of it. If you did, please hit the like button. 
And uh, don't forget to check out the description of my video for some really cool links. And until next time, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.